Okay, so first of all, thanks the organizers for this invitation. Of course, it's impossible to reject such a great weather and location. So uh, the uh, title of this uh, mini course is uh, Hamiltonian Diffeomorphisms. And persistence models Okay, and I wish to start with the uh, definition of the persistence module, and so then we will uh, discuss several examples, and uh, you will maybe see some motivation. So assume that F is a field. Uh, so persistence module is a pair V pi which consists of the following objects. So first of all, uh, V is a family of vector spaces Vt when T belongs to R. And uh, this is uh, finite dimensional F vector space. So uh, we actually will assume that uh, there exists a zero such that for each s less than a zero, vt equals to zero. So I wish this sequence somehow to be uh, trivial at the left end. Okay? So there will be some more properties, but first of all, what are pi's? So when s is less than t, so pi st from vs to vt is a linear map. And uh, we assume uh, this persistence property, which means the following. So if s is less than t less than r, so you look at the diagram Vs goes to Vt goes to Vr. So this is Psr and P, Pst and Ptr and Psr. So this diagram commutes. Okay? So somehow these uh, morphisms agree one to another. So then uh, come a uh, couple of properties which uh, make this theory kind of more friendly, and I will assume them. So first uh, is called regularity, which means the following. So for all, but finite number of points, uh, uh, there exists a neighborhood. There exists a neighborhood U of T such that PSR from VS to VR is isomorphism for each SR in U S less than R. Okay, so this means the following, that essentially all these spaces are the same uh, except certain problematic points. Okay, so, so for each other point, uh, all these persistence morphisms are just isomorphism. Okay, and actually one can already with these four axioms uh, build a kind of nice theory, but uh, I really want uh, to make my life even more easy and assume semi-continuity 
in a continuity which means that for every t there, there exists epsilon uh, such that epsilon bigger than zero such that for each s in t minus epsilon t and r in t minus epsilon t actually uh, psr uh, is also isomorphism. So, in other words, in other words, we assume that even in these problematic points, the life is not so bad. So, if we will look at uh, semi-open intervals like this, so here you still have isomorphism. So that's that's my definition. Okay. So now there exists various variations of this definition. So, so, so in principle, in principle, uh, the main properties are, I would say, uh, one to three. Okay. So, so you already can say something. So, some examples. Some examples. So, so first example, I would say, a zero example is something which is called interval model. This is probably the simplest thing you can come with. So you take interval a, b. So a less than b, well, less or equal than plus infinity. So b can be infinite. And you just assume the following thing. So uh, your m model goes like this. So uh, first of all, let me give a notation. So Q of A, B will be, will be my notation. OK, so over each point of the interval, the vector space is the original field. So outside the interval, it's 0. And the morphisms look like this. So within the interval, uh, the morphisms are the identities. And all other morphisms naturally are zeros. Okay, so you have no other choice. Okay, and you will you will see uh, very soon why this example is is kind of crucial. So now come some uh, uh, meaningful example. So uh, X is a closed manifold. And f from x to r is Morse function. So in this situation, you can do the following thing. So you define vt to be hk of f less than t. So this is your favorite homology theory. OK, and since I wish to stick to coefficients, uh, I mean, to vector spaces over f, yeah, so, so coefficients are with f, OK, in the, with this original vector field. And, uh, and so then you have the following thing. So if s is less than t, so uh, the, the set f less than s naturally contained in the set f less than t. OK, so imagine the Morse function of on a manifold f, and I just slice it like this. So this is, let's say, t, and this is s. So you see that f less than s is contained in a bigger set uh, f less than t. OK, and so this inclusion, of course, induces the map on homology. So, so if I will denote this by i s t, so then you have pi s t is just i s t sharp, so map in homology. And this is persistence morphism. Uh, from v s to any questions so far? Okay, 
So let's go a little bit further. Yes? Why do you need F3 Morse for this? Uh, because I want this finiteness assumption. Ah. Okay, and so, 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 so then you will see that with uh, I will be able to, to extract whatever I wish to extract from my life. Yeah, for all Morse functions, but uh, I mean for all functions, not even Morse, not even smooth, I would say, so continuous would work. Okay, but uh, I really do not want to change algebraic setup. Okay, because it's very friendly and I, I uh, somehow, I know, at least I worked out the proofs. Okay of what I'm going to say on the linear algebra side. Okay, the next, exa the next example I will probably uh, denote it by one prime. So let's say this is a linear algebra. So this is Morse theory. Okay, so let's take the full bank and uh, uh, jump to floor theory. Okay, so assume that M omega is a closed symplectic manifold. Symplectic manifold. So phi, okay, belongs to the group of Hamiltonian diffeomorphisms of omega. If you wish to be really pedantic, so go to universal cover, but it's not actually so important. And, and then we will denote uh, Vt to be just filtered floor homology of uh, phi. Okay, let's say in contractible class, so with certain modifications, with uh, non, you can work also with non-contractible classes, okay. And uh, then persistence morphisms again, persistence morphism, uh, natural morphism. So when s less than t, so you have maps h f s of phi to h f t of phi, okay. And so now, in order to have nice theory, I have uh, uh, to, to impose some extra condition on phi, just to have this finiteness. Yeah, so I assume that it is non-degenerate map. So all periodic orbits of interest are non-degenerate in the dynamical sense, okay? So now we kind of know that, of course, floor homology depends on some extra structures, I mean, notably on almost complex structure, although even loop of almost complex structures on the manifold compatible with the symplectic forms, but you can, you can still define these spaces canonically, okay, and uh, you have these morphisms canonically. So uh, what I want to maybe emphasize that this example and this example are essentially the same, okay, at least on this level, because just X is loop space of M here. So loop space and a function f from x to r is just action function. OK, and so if as your homology theory you will choose Morse homology, OK, so then this generalization will be pretty much uh, I mean, straightforward model of all well-known difficulties of developing floor theory. So no, 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 no problems on algebraic level. Okay, and uh, then there is another example. Uh, yes, I probably there is something which I wanted to to show you. Okay, I will just I will just send this. Yes, yeah, so could, could you please pass this? Okay, so second example. Ah, oh, I understood. <laughs> okay. Ah, very good. Yeah. OK, 
Can you see something? So, second example is called uh, finite metric spaces. Okay, so uh, I, will, I will maybe say a few words. So, this example has at least so far absolutely nothing to do with symplectic geometry, okay? So, on the other hand, I would put it in the following way. So, so this uh, persistence models theory or persistent homology uh, is often considered as a part of some applied field called topological data analysis. Okay, and uh, I think that uh, this is a pretty pretty beautiful mathematical ingredient of this topological data analysis, and the. The simplest issue is the following. So, 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 so assume that you have really some complicated data. Okay, so you, you put this data on, uh, I don't know, some in a space uh, Rn with coordinates, so coordinates correspond to certain physical parameters, and so then you ask the question, what do you see? Okay, and the answer is the following. It's very much depends on the scale. It very much depends on the scale. So, so for instance, on the, on the picture which I uh, uh, somehow passed you, so on certain scales, on very small scales, you see ellipse, on larger uh, squares, and on a huge scale, you just see triangle, okay? And uh, people uh, who are trying to analyze the data, the, I mean, they're really kind of interested to to, to understand what happens with this data, what represents this data uh, as a function of the scale, okay? But this is, I would say, half of the trouble. Uh, it's a little, bit, a little bit romantic kind of statement because, uh, I mean, who knows? On one scale I see this, and on another scale I see that, and so what, okay? But here is a problem which uh, at least I can imagine is of uh, certain practical uh, importance. So assume that we we have uh, we are doing I don't know with Francois the same kind of experiment, but I'm doing it in Tel Aviv and he in Montreal, and so then we, we wish to compare our data, and we get kind of different things. Yeah, no chance that our ex experiments kind of really coincide. But we wish to measure distance. Yeah, and say that uh, the kind of that our experiment are very far away, yeah, and so this means that something is kind of inconsistent, or they are pretty close, kind of satisfactory close. And uh, at this point, uh, uh, the uh, persistence model, which I will try to, to introduce now, uh, can help. Yeah, so it will not solve this problem kind of universally, but will provide sometimes a reasonable answer. So, let's uh, pass to the business. So, assume that X and D is a finite metric space. Okay, so, uh, being honestly speaking, I do not need this finiteness, yeah, but uh, this is just an illustration, and with finite metric spaces, I, I will avoid all kinds of questions, yeah, because it's, it's just finite. And uh, fix a number alpha in R. So I will define something which is called RIPS, sometimes RIPS V Torres complex. And somehow it was first, of course, introduced by V Torres, but unnoticed, yeah, and so then RIPS somehow reintroduced it into geometry group theory and found some uh, pretty great applications. Uh, so, what is this? So, we uh, look at simplex with vertices x1, xk, so xi in our space, and we say that this simplex belongs to our complex
So, uh, which uh, I will denote by grips of x alpha if and only if distance between x i and x j less than alpha for each i and j. Okay, so some illustration, some illustration. So assume that I have just on R2, I have a square, I have a square, so these distances are one. Okay, and so no diagonal says one can calculate a square root of two. And so then what we see in this picture, so when I would say, uh, right, so, uh, so when alpha is less than or equal than zero, so we see empty set, okay, because distance cannot be less than zero. So when alpha is less or equal than one but bigger than zero, so we just see four points. So if alpha is less or equal than square root of two and bigger than zero, so then we see a circle. So somehow on this scale, we do not see the diagonals, right? And finally, if alpha is greater than square root of two, so question to the students, what do we see? Any ideas? So question, what is Rips complex? Uh, Rips of X alpha, so alpha X is our metric space consisting of vertices of the square on the plane, okay? And uh, uh, alpha is greater than square root of two. Uh, yeah, so I, I see the full tetrahedron. Okay, so the full simplex. So you see the topology, topology changes, yeah? So here I have, okay, here everything vanishes, here I have non-trivial H0, so then H0 kind of stabilizes to uh, rank one kind of, yeah, but here I have non-trivial H1, and then finally I have a simplex which is, has homotopy type of point. Okay, so that's the change of uh, topology. So what people in topological data analysis say, so these are kind of topological footprints of, of metric space, okay? And so now how do we define the, how do we define the complex? So, I mean the persistence model, so we'll do just the following, so we, uh, Define VT to be homology of this uh, Rips complex of X with parameter T. So simple, let's say simplicial, homo simplicial complex. So we define simplicial homology with coefficients in our field. And again, if S is less than T, so then you immediately see then uh, you immediately see that uh, uh, R of uh, X S, uh, I mean, uh, so, so let me abbreviate this to R, so is subset of, subcomplex actually of R of X T, and so you have a natural map pi S T from, which is uh, I S T sharp from V S to V T. Okay, so let me let me uh, uh, 
say a few words about uh, linear algebra of persistence models. So, first of all, persistence models form a uh, form a category. Yeah, so objects are the models and morphisms are defined in a natural way. So a from v pi to v prime p prime is just family a t from v t to v t prime. So linear maps, linear maps such that the following diagram commutes. So v s v s prime v t v t prime, right. So this is a s a t uh, pi s t and pi prime s t. Okay, and so this is kind of obvious definition. Okay, so so you immediately calculate. But uh, and I wish to give you an example. So example, it's example slash exercise which I wish to solve in the class, kind of. So assume that you have uh, natural inclusions. So Q of 1, 2 to Q of 1, 3, and Q of 2, 3 to Q of 1, 3. So, uh, I'm thinking of integral models, which you see on the upper blackboard on the left, okay? And uh, then uh, we just have the following picture, right? So this is interval 1, 3, and this is interval 1, 2. Okay, so somewhere here is 2. Okay, and my map is just you know, natural map, so it, it is identity where it could be identity and zero otherwise. And another definition, uh, so another situation is the following. So you have one, three, and two, three. Okay, the same. So this is, let's say, situation A, and this is situation B. And so question, is it a morphism? <sighs> no, Q is just, just letter. It stands for nothing, for interval model. Interval model Q of AB, maybe you are right that F of AB would be a better notation, but I'm used to this, yeah. Okay, so, so uh, that's a question. Okay, and so let's say, what do you think about this situation? Is it a morphism? Hmm? Yeah, so there is a, a problem with zero map, very good. Yeah, so let me... Let me illustrate it. So here is the problem. OK, so this is identity, this is identity, this is 0, and this is 0. Diagram doesn't commute, OK? So you have no, answer no. No, in this situation, everything is perfect, because, uh, because if you will look at this diagram, Okay, so this is zero, zero, one, one, and you see that diagram commutes. So the answer is yes. And this example, any questions about this example? 
So, so this example shows the following thing. This example shows the following thing. So on the other hand, of course, Q of 1, 2 is a quotient of Q of 1, 3 modulo Q of 2, 3. Okay, so this means that you have essentially exact, exact, exact sequence. So 0 to Q of 2, 3 to Q of 1, 3 to Q of 1, 2 and to 0. So great exact sequence here yeah, does not split. So claim it does not split. Okay, and uh, and somehow the reason the re is uh, actual reason you've seen here, yeah, because Q12 is just not a submodel. If it would be submodel, so then you will have, of course, a direct sum decomposition. And so this example shows that this category of persistence models is uh, pretty much different from the category of vector spaces. Okay, so 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 actually you. You, for instance, have work harder uh, in order to prove the normal form theory. And the normal form theorem is still beautiful. So, so actually, I, I probably should say that uh, somehow in algebra, there is this notion of quiver. Hope I wrote this correctly. And uh, this is pretty much close cousin of this quiver theory. Okay, on the other hand, I believe that mostly, I mean, people were interested in quivers parameterized by Z. And here you have certain real valid information, which, which is of major interest, as you will see in applications. Okay, so this is a kind of slightly, maybe different thing, but uh, they are very close, and normal form theorem states the following. Okay, so, so maybe uh, let me give me a definition. So definition, a barcode, and this is kind of key buzzword, is just a collection of intervals. Uh, I, J, M, J. So with multiplicities. Okay, so IJ is of the form AJ, BJ, as we decided. So uh, uh, AJ, BJ, so AJ less than BJ less or equal than plus infinity. And MJ is just natural number, not in French convention, but in Russian, so zero is not an N. Okay, I mean, uh, so, so it's a uh, negative integer. Okay, and so you can, in principle, vis visualize the barcode in the following way. So you just have some collection of intervals, so some of them appear with certain multiplicities, so among these intervals could be kind of infinite rays, okay? But it's a finite number of them, okay? And so now normal form theorem uh, normal form theorem states the following. So for each v pi, there exists unique barcode b, uh, which is just collection i, j, m, j, such that uh, v pi is a direct sum when i runs from uh, over j uh, q of ij, so interval model in the power mj. 
Okay, so so uh, uh, every persistence module as defined uh, as defined uh, can be represented as in a unique way, of course, up to permutation and things like this. Okay, uh, but uh, for all practical purposes, in a unique way, as direct sum of interval models, which serve as uh, elementary blocks in this construction. And so a wrong proof goes like this. So, so, so start with some interval submodule. It's easy to find that. Okay, consider it's kind of direct complement, and then argue inductively. Okay, wrong approach because, as I explained in this example, so if you will st uh, start with the interval model like this, so you will not find direct complement. It's not a submodule. So th that's why one should be kind of pretty more, pretty more careful. Okay, and by the way, uh, the actual reason why this, why, why this exact sequence which uh, appears over there does not split is this normal form theorem. So if it splits, so then Q13 would be direct sum of two other interval models, which is impossible, which is forbidden by the normal form theory. Okay. Okay, so next I will uh, try to explain the following notion. Uh, which is called okay maybe you know what I will I will upgrade what is written here so I want this blue part black part back Okay, so let me try to, to explain the structure of the theory. So uh, interval models kind of disappear because their role was in this normal form theorem. Yeah, so we will just test all, I mean, uh, future definitions at this example. But there is no much moral here. But now I wish to do the following thing. So, so we have functions, let's say, on a manifold X, Morse if you wish, and you have uniform norm, so norm F is maximum oops, of absolute value of F, and so if you have two functions, f and g, so you can measure distance between them as norm f minus fg. Okay, so that's uniform norm. So then we consider this group hum of m omega. So, well, maybe universal cover, but in this or another way, we know how to measure distance between two Hamiltonian diffeomorphisms, and uh, this space is equipped with Hofer's metric. Okay, and uh, the last example was finite metric spaces. Finite metric spaces, and uh, if you have two finite vector, sp vector spaces x dx and y dy. So you have a nice distance which is called Gromov-Hausdorff distance, which I will define later. I probably will define it. OK, so now to, we know that to each function corresponds persistence module uh, HT f less than t uh, with 
natural persistence morphisms to each Hamiltonian diffeomorphisms. Uh, diffeomorphism correspond floor homology of phi filtered by T gain with persistence morphism and to finite vector space X corresponds to uh, corresponds this uh, persistence model which is homology of Rips complex of XT. Okay? So objects of interest are mapped to persistence models. Okay? And now I wish to sell you the following statement. Okay, so here you have matrix, right? And these are persistence models. And what I wish to do, I wish to introduce here a metric also. So that all these maps will be Lipschitz. OK, so the, this is the, the step which uh, will happen now. Yeah? So we'll define certain natural distance on persistence models such that uh, this, uh, uh, if you wish, uh, kind of fun quite functorial maps, yeah, so, so which uh, send an object of interest, kind of geometric object to an algebraic object, okay, will be Lipschitz. And uh, then we're in a better shape because, because, in a sense, dream of every topology and geometer is to replace topology and geometer by algebra, and so then maybe do something, okay? And uh, uh, so this will be the, the, the first step, and uh, the, the, okay, so let me do it, and so then we will discuss. Okay, I will not run ahead. Okay, so here comes a crucial notion which is called interleaving. Between persistence models. Okay, and uh, in order to define it, I need the following notion. It's called shift morphism. Shift morphism. Uh, so assume that V pi is a persistence model and delta positive. So then uh, let me define Vt delta to be by definition Vt plus delta and pi as t delta is just pi s plus delta t plus delta. Okay, so I just shift, shift the uh, parameter, a kind of additive way. And uh, uh, the, I will define phi delta from v pi to uh, v delta pi delta as follows. So, uh, So this is just, uh, this map is just pi t, t plus delta, okay? So you see in V itself, 
there is a natural morphism. I mean, one of persistence morphisms of V itself, so shifts, yeah, maps each vector space with index t to vector space with index t plus delta. So let's use it. Okay, and exercise, exercise that phi delta is indeed morphism. Morphism of persistence modulus. So as I said, this is a notion is not 100% cheap. Yeah. So 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 some natural maps. I mean, turn out to be not morphism. So these things should be checked. And so then, with this definition, we can we can define this interleaving as follows. So definition. Uh, V pi and uh, W theta are delta interleaved uh, delta interleaved if there exists morphisms uh, F from V to shift W and from G from W to shift at V, so that the following diagrams hold. So you have V, F, W delta. So then, OK, since you have morphism from G from V to uh, uh, W to V delta, so you can shift this morphism to have map from W delta to V to delta. So let me consider this W. Uh, sorry, V to delta, and this will be G delta, okay? And I wish that this diagram commutes with the shift morphism phi to delta V, okay? So this interleaving uh, often is in our terminology is just sandwiching, yeah? So we sandwich one uh, sequence between two others, but with shift. Okay, and we wish that this diagram, so you have a kind of natural shift map and some sandwiching, that this diagram commutes. Okay, and of course I need the second condition that uh, W goes to uh, V delta, uh, goes to W delta, and you have here F delta, and this is shift map in uh, uh, w by 2 delta. Okay, and uh, so that's, this is the end of the definition. Okay, so now, yes? You mean W delta or W2 delta? Where? Okay. Oh, W2 delta, okay, so, so thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so here are some uh, uh, remarks or exercises, if you wish. So first exercise is The following, so for persistence model VT, put, sorry, let's say V pi, put 
the infinity to be just vt for all t, which is very big. So remember that uh, this persistence model, by, defini by my definition at least, jumps only in finite number of points. So after certain points, everything stabilizes. So you have this space at infinity, OK? And uh, the claim is the following, that uh, so proof that uh, v pi and w theta are delta interleaved, delta interleaved with finite delta, with finite delta if and only if dimension of v infinity equals to dimension of w infinity. Okay, so this is quite an exercise. So uh, Shiratani, who is in this room, so solved it once. Okay, so if you if you have a question, so you can you can ask her. Okay, and uh, the uh, second uh, exercise is the following. So assume that uh, uh, v and w are delta 1 interleaved and w and z are delta 2 interleaved. So then proof that v and z are delta 1 plus delta 2 interleaved. These are great news, actually, because at this point, because at this point, we can give the following definition. So definition, so D int, int stands for interleaving between V pi and W theta equals infimum or delta such that uh, they are delta interleaved. OK? And uh, the, this exercise guarantee, I mean, this, this remarks guarantee, or exercises guarantee the following thing. This is, this is a metric, a distance, on isomorphism classes. classes of persistence models with the same, OK, let's say dimension of v infinity. So v infinity is finite dimensional vector space. So whenever they are isomorphic, so, so we have this thing, and uh, then I claim that the table above, I claim that the table above makes sense, so that indeed this, this uh, uh, arrows which you see on the left side of the upper blackboard are actually Lipschitz map. And after the break, I will uh, I, I will probably prove this for functions, which is a uh, pretty, elementary, pretty elementary exercise. OK, and so before the break, I wanted to, to do something. You, 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 will, you will see just, just after the break. OK, I will, I will spend time. And there is something small I want to make, and I... I did not miss this up, oh, no. OK. So uh, uh, I should say that, uh, so who, uh, who are kind of, uh, uh, our heroes? OK, so this theory of persistence models 
Я вас девелоп, то и вы сей пробли since early to, I mean, 2000, right? So, so more than decade. And there are several players. So now, now, I mean, the literature is vast, but I must mention several names. So Edels, Bru Edels Brunner, Harrer, Harrer, Carlson, Zamaradian, Weinberger, and many others whom I did not, did not name. Okay, so I believe that, uh, that this uh, idea that you can measure distances between uh, persistence models parameterized by uh, a real number is a pretty profound idea which appeared in kind of in their in their papers. Okay, so uh, after the after the break, so I will I will continue and will uh, will uh, revise this notion of interleaving, so it will be clear what is this delta. Okay, and. Uh, 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 in the in the in the in the example of let's say functions, okay. So let's uh, let's make a break. Is it, is it non -degenerated? Huh? Is it non-degenerated? Yes, yes, yes. So 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 it's non-degenerate due to kind of pretty restrictive assumptions which I put on persistence model. So so roughly speaking, I mean general theory. So at least in, the, in, in its kind of standard formulation, doesn't distinguish between, so, so it includes four types of intervals. Like, you know, open, closed, semi-open on the right, and semi-open on the left. So it's uh, probably just too much for me, so to say, so I decided let me work with just kind of this kind of semi-open interval. So then metric becomes indeed, indeed non-degenerate. Okay, but even if it is degenerate, I mean, it's not very much degenerate. So. So you can, uh, I mean, uh, in general theory, uh, it's important. I mean, doesn't doesn't catch us which type of interval do you have, okay? But otherwise, it's degenerates. So it glues not much things. Okay. <laughs> 